Help presents Stress-Free Living with Ray Savage and Mr. Stress-Free, Ratanjit S. Sandhi. This audio program is an unscripted and unrehearsed conversation between Ray and Ratanjit. It is shared with you in hope of adding value to your life. We encourage you to listen to this program in its entirety to receive the full impact of its message. Sit back, relax, open your heart, mind, and soul to this edition of Stress-Free Living. And welcome to Stress-Free Living. I'm Ray Samish with Ratanjit Sandy. Ratanjit, how are you this fine day? Wonderful, brother. How are you? Well, thank you. And right off the top, we want to let everybody know that we just celebrated our anniversary together. Uh, you keep track of that. I, I thank you for it because I don't remember too many important dates, but I know you do. And uh, it was on July 8th of 1995 that you and I shared our first broadcast together. And I still remember, you know, not exactly that show, but I remember those early, early days of talking with you. And I, you know, maybe you and I both look different and maybe we're a little different uh, on the outside, but I think we probably still do the show pretty much the way we did from the beginning, pretty much just having a conversation. Yes. Well, you, you look more handsome and more wiser. And <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why was, we've continued because we're both complimenting each other. Yeah. And even if, even if we embellish the truth just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. but in, in, my, to... in my case, I make sense or I don't make sense. It all depends on how tight my turban is. See, I've noticed that. The mornings that you uh, tie it too tight, I, I don't understand you. So it, it, <laughs> that makes sense, too. But we certainly have had a lot of uh, great times together, have talked about so many interesting thoughts and topics and perspectives on things. And I really thank you because you have been, uh, you've been a real, uh, such a critically important factor in my life over these years to really straighten me out and really keep me on the, on the spiritual path that I need. And I know on behalf of uh, many, many listeners, thousands of listeners that have told me that over the years that still tell me that uh, they listen to the show faithfully and enjoy it and uh, learn from it and, and are inspired by it. So on their behalf, we thank you. Well, brother, I, my show will be totally confusing if you don't clarify what I say. <laughs> Without you, the show would not go anywhere. So you are the key to the entire no. show. Well, thank you. We, we, we work together. The, the good wisdom comes from you, and then I try to dumb it down so I can understand it. And uh, that's, that's a good team. We, we work well together, which is why we're celebrating 26 years here uh, just within the last couple of days. Well, let's keep, the, uh, let's keep the years rolling. And there is a topic that I'm sure over these years we have covered before, because it is such a critical part of our lives and it's trust. But I, I would venture to say that there is less trust in this world today than ever before. I, I just look around and I see that the anchors that we used to believe in are no longer there. We, we no longer, we certainly don't trust the media. You know, there was a time in the media, brother, because that's my background, where if you didn't have a source that was verified multiple times, you didn't share a story. If, if you didn't know with two or three or four good sources, it never made it to print or wherever or to voice. And that's all gone. Now you can find anybody saying anything and, and it's immediately true. Our politicians, we always knew that there was some you know, some crooked politicians, but for the most part, we really believed that you could trust our leadership. I mean, we, we checked them out as much as we could, and we believed that if they were an elected official, they had integrity, and, and we could believe in most of them. And that's gone. We, we don't trust any of them anymore. Um, there's so many, you know, teachers, I mean, instructors, professors, wow, if they're a professor, they're so well-educated, and now there's a lot of belief that, that they're being skewed, you know, along political lines, and, and that we can't believe them anymore, that they're all part of this system. 
So we don't trust our educators. We don't trust our political leaders. We don't trust our media. And then we have the churches. And, and there's been so many scandals in within different church segments and so many le- church uh, pastors and, and everything have gone to jail for bribery or for uh, assaulting or for, for sex I- involvement, things like that. And, and we don't trust the churches anymore. <laughs> so it, it really comes out to say, you know, do we trust anybody? Can we really trust anybody? And then of course, you added in the topic, can we even trust ourselves? So <laughs> I think it's a great topic today um, because without trust, I think we're in a very volatile situation, a very frustrating situation to live our lives if we don't really feel we can trust anyone. Well, let's, let's go to the fundamental basic thing. See, many times, uh, you know, we, we have seen so many of these uh, scandals going around. People are selling things to people. And we, a lot of people end up becoming victim of uh, snake oil salesmen, so to speak. Why? Intelligent people, many of them, why do they believe all that? Because somewhere in us, what we hear, if it suits our requirement or addresses our fear, addresses our greed, addresses our ego, we are more likely to believe that. And that is what advertising has used very uh, shrewdly. Because when they construct an advertising, they are addressing these issues. They're addressing your fear, they're addressing your greed, they're addressing your ego, all that. So all our uh, belief system which we want to believe somebody is based on these factors. So does that make any sense? Oh, it it makes, you know, so many times over these 26 years, you just, you just change the perspective. You change the path that I think we're going to go on and you've just done it again. And I just made notes of two things that you just said, which, you know, I, I was coming in saying, we can't trust anybody. And you just introduced two thoughts. You've introduced the thought that technology and intelligence and research has really figured out the process of how to reach people with certain words that, or certain tones of voice or certain um, approaches that we want to buy into. We want to we want to believe these things, even if they're not true. So probably the procedures, the processes have changed dramatically that we now trust people because they're saying the right things and doing the right things. So you've introduced that concept. You've also introduced the fact that we've probably changed. We're greedier. We're, we, we want the things now. We, we want instant gratification. And so we're looking for those words. We're looking for people saying and doing the right things where we want to trust them because we think it's better for us. Yes. So, so you've instantly, you've just introduced a couple of things there that I think are are certainly worth talking about because maybe the blame isn't all on the people. Maybe the, it's, it's on the understanding that the people are going to say the right things that we want to hear. So we all are parked in the same mode, Ray. We are all people who are telling us they, they are driven by the same thing. And they want to give you a bill of goods because that bill of good is going to benefit them but they package in a form that addresses your fear, greed, and ego. So both parties are in the same bracket. And see, there is another side of this equation. See, how do we receive any information? 
we receive either by looking at it, reading, or by listening, or by smell or touch or feel. In other words, we are, are receiving instruments, our five senses, mm -hmm. right? Now, five senses, at best, Ray, they do not collect the complete information because your eyes can only see certain wavelengths of light. You're, you can only hear certain frequency of light. So the, the dog whistle is different than, than you, you know, there are so many sounds we cannot hear, comprehend. There, there is a television going on in this room. We need a, a big tube to listen to the television or radio. So all these things are around us, but we cannot hear them. So our limited five senses will at best gather incomplete data, incomplete information. So if we are not contaminated by our ego, greed, and fear, at best we have incomplete data, but it doesn't stop there. When the data gets through our system, it passes through our fear, it passes through our greed, it passes through our ego, is get, gets contaminated. So any information, if you line up 10 people and give them the same information, ask them to see the same thing, play the same movie, they come up with different conclusions. Why? Because they're part in different frame of mind, which is guided by their fear, greed, and ego. So at, at, at the human level, Ray, you are not really equipped to have the truth or trust. No matter how smart you are, the smarter you are, the more uh, twist, twisting and turning you will do to the truth. You know, I, I'm glad you again mentioned about our five senses and how faulty that is. And, and for our first time listeners or newer listeners, maybe they haven't heard that before. For our long time listeners, they've heard you say that many times, but we need to be reminded of that because we, we want to think that we are so capable and so competent to be able to assess situations. And what you say makes perfect sense so that, that at best it's incomplete, most likely it's contaminated. And I think we can also add one more, one more distinction on there. Incomplete, contaminated, and I think, and I'm not sure these are the best words, but professionally skewed, okay, <laughs> would be the third aspect of it. Because trillions of dollars have been spent and continue to be spent on telling us what we want to hear, showing us what we want to see, manipulating our minds with with different visions and different imaginations of what we could have and what we really want and what the world could be. And so there's there's this process that's also not really letting us see what's really there and, and yes. hear what's really being heard. Even if we have great vision, we can't see through what they're doing to yes. the reality. So there's this professional skewing going on that is also distorting reality. So this is called professional skewing. Skewing is called uh, sophistication. <laughs> and if you if you look at the dictionary, I, I was surprised. In one of one of the word in dictionary the, is is called uh, translating sophistication into corrupt corruption. Wow! Wow! Yeah. It corrupts the data. And, and that, is, that is what we go learn in, in our MBA. That's, yeah. what, that's what- we, Oh, we admire that. We admire our brilliant marketers and, and the brilliant yes. wordsmiths. Okay, they're, and, and they are, they're brilliant, 
but it is it is manipulation. There's no question about it. Yes. It, it you know so so that is going on around us again. And I think don't you think we know that too? We we know that we're being manipulated, and that's why at the core we start saying, can we believe anything? It, is anything trustworthy? See inside of us sitting there. The divine power knows the thing. They know how corrupt we are and how corrupt everybody else is. But because we are guided by this human body mode we talked about in all these shows, which is basically the human body is insecure. It is filled with fear. It is filled with greed. It wants more food. Otherwise, it's going to starve and it has ego. So we remain part in the human body mode and all the tools available are used by this human body mode and to receive, to get more, what is in it for me by hook or crook. And then we justify that everybody lies. So, so what if I lie? Everybody cheats, so what if I cheat? Mm -hmm. and, and so on. So this, this state of affair has led our humanity to such a point that it has, it, it is going to destroy us, basically. And it is. You know, I, my favorite thing, my, when I came to United States, in 1968, you need to take a break, I think, before I can do the story. Okay. okay, before we do the story, okay. If it's going to be a, a lengthy story, let's take a break first. We're talking today about trust. Uh, is there anybody other than Ratanjit Sandy that you can trust in this world? And can we trust, <laughs> can we trust ourselves? And I think we're also going down the path of talking about integrity. I think uh, we're going to really end up finding out, is there still integrity in the world within us? And is that what we should be looking for uh, around us? We'll have much more as we open up and advance this topic on today's Dress Free Living. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll be right back. I didn't know it was going to be a long story, so I thought I was going to let you do the story before, <laughs> before the break, but that's okay. We'll do it after. Oh, here's here's my here's my commercial for my pillow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, so well we have one guest with us here today. We don't have our normal crew of people. Yeah, we don't have a, people have abandoned us. <laughs> because I know they have <laughs> all of them today. <laughs> uh oh, was it something I said? It must be me, because <laughs> you, you clarify all all the nonsense I do. <laughs> no, I, I think you're right on track here today. And we let's hear, uh, Dilip Singh Ji. Can you open your mic and uh, give us? Uh, we have. Well, we, we, have we have we have about a minute. If you have anything that you would like to say with us, quick. Any quick comments? You're welcome to unmute yourself. Maybe not. Oh, there she goes. There he goes. Go ahead, just start talking. Another. Oh, they unmuted for a second, but now it's back. All right. That's okay. I guess we're on our own. Yeah. <laughs> Come back with your story. Okay. Okay, we're back. <laughs> we are back on Stress Free Living. Ray Samich, Ratanjit Sandy with you today talking about trust. And it is something that I think does cause great stress in our life. We are unsure if we can trust anybody, we can trust ourselves. And 
that insecurity and frustration, I think, is causing a lot of stress for people. So we're talking about that today. Ruth and you, you were about to share a story going way back uh, 53 well, years ago when you came to America. Well, we were talking about how our society has gone from bad to worse, although we have uh, worldly good things, uh, good technology, good cars, good all these things there. But our human mind is suffering. There, is, there are more people who are on antidepressant drugs and, and so on and so forth. So um, what I wanted to share with you is when I came to U.S., in 1976, 70, 78, sorry. 68, 68. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> 68. Uh, in 1968 uh, to for higher studies at Acton U. And at that point, I saw U.S. in a totally different light, Ray. I saw, because U.S. is... Uh, acutely watched and noticed by the world growing up. So U.S., in my mind, in my book, was a human experiment undertaken by entire human race. And they wanted to see if best and brightest and the most challenging people all around the world come to this place where they do not have any baggage. They don't have any uh, caste system. They don't have any uh, boundaries. They were free, total freedom. What can human race achieve? And, and as a consequence of that, US had become the richest nation in the world and it has produced over 800 billionaires with over $4 trillion of net worth. And you know how many millionaires th there are? 20.2 20 million millionaires. Wow. 20.2 20 million <laughs> millionaires. Wow. And their net worth is 158 trillion dollars. And we have the world's best universities in this. And many of these universities have endowments, which you cannot even think of many $40 billion of endowments, $30 billion of endowments. And then there are, we have produced the highest number of Nobel laureate in the world. We have the highest technology development of the world. All that, you know, great positive side. But the other reality is, my friend, that 43%, 43% of the population of this great nation can barely afford day-to-day -day living, food on the table, paying rent, paying, getting health care, any of these. Mm -hmm. And in spite of spending close to $3.8 trillion on health care, this nation can qualify to be the sickest nation on earth. Okay. There are more mental cases present here. There are more people on antidepressant drugs and all that. So where are those two extremes? Because what happened is ultimately all our driver, in spite of given the freedom, in spite of given total whatever you want to do, we were still guided by our five senses, our human body mode, controlled by our fear, greed, and ego. And so it doesn't matter how much money we throw at 
how much education we give, ultimately all our knowledge in absence of true wisdom remains highly decorated ignorance. That's what we are dealing with in our society. Ignorant people guiding ignorant people. Those are pretty harsh words there, Ratanjit. Um, There's no other choice, Ray. I'm not condemning. I'm, 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 I'm part of it. <laughs> well, ignorance is a strong word, as you and I have talked in the past, because no, nobody wants to be considered ignorant. That, that's, you know, you can tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about, and I'm okay with that. You can tell me that I'm wrong, and I'm okay with that. But if you call me ignorant, that that really hits me hard now i now i because i don't want to be ignorant and i don't think anybody <laughs> wants to be considered ignorant why because our ego hurts we are still parked in ego because we cannot accept that truth because of our ego ego comes right back how can you tell me i'm ignorant i have 20 phds <laughs> right i'm a ceo of a company i employ 2000 people how how can you call me ignorant well, and, and I think there's also a human, there's a human aspect in the word too, is that we, we're choosing to ignore important data or important feelings or important realities of life that we choose to ignore. And that's, I think, what hurts. It, it isn't the lack of knowledge because you could have, it is possible to have multiple MBAs and still be ignorant, but but not if you are in touch with reality, if you're in touch with the world and you're not really ignorant. So I think it takes a lack of, it, it isn't as much lack of knowledge as is lack of understanding, lack of reality of what's real. And that's what hurts. I, I don't want to be said, I don't want you to say that I don't understand what's happening around me. See, there is another side, Ray. Education, knowledge, is nothing more than tool. There are tools. But if you are not totally sure what you're going to do with the tools, you're going to use these tools at the wrong places. See, there, there was a program through which uh, US, uh, one, one billionaire was traveling to a remote part of Africa, and they found this uh, tribe which is not exposed to civilization at all. So they, he formed a, a relationship with that, that tribe. He says, look, we want your people to come to the United States to visit for a month or two months and stay and experience what civilization is. And so he uh, asked for volunteer who can volunteer to host this, these people who are visiting. So one of the volunteer, a close friend of mine who was host, <clears throat> hosting this person from uh, that tribe, he has never seen anything. So it so happened when he was in his house, he was overwhelmed with all these things and, and so it so happened that he, uh, he needed to fix a pipe or, or something in his basement. And he saw that his drill was not working. So he wanted to go to a, a um, store to get a drill. So he thought it'll be a good experience for this guy to come with me. So he took him and he saw this drill operated by battery and he said, oh my God. So he says, what do we do with this? So he comes home and drills a hole. This was a big, big hole in, in, in the wood. He says, oh, wow. Suddenly he got a call from the mayor of the city and he has to attend the call. He says, look, I'm, I'm going to be right back. So after he finished the call, he comes back. His whole basement was full of holes. <laughs> So that is what you're going to do with your tools if you do not know what 
to do with them. Yes, we have tremendous technology, but what we are going, what we are doing with the technology, we have become most sophisticated thieves in our society. You know the, how much cyber crime was committed, how much money was lost to cyber crime in 2018. $600 billion. You know what is projected this year? How much? Seven billion, a trillion dollars. Wow. Seven trillion dollars lost to technology based cyber crime because the currency they are using cryptocurrency, nobody can trace it. Nobody can trace where the payments were made and so on. And our government operated cities and counties are paying ransoms. Mm -hmm. And that is what has happened to our society because we were busy developing fancy tools, technology, education, but we never focused on giving them a purpose of life. You and I have often talked about conscience and it's a word that I don't think they teach anymore in education. Uh, I, when I went to grade school way back when, we actually did. I remember in the classroom talking about every person has a conscience and it wasn't a religious thing. It was, it was actually, you know, some moral guidance. It was moral based, but it wasn't religious that said that there's something within us that tells us what's right and what's wrong and what we should do. And if we, if we feel bad about something we did, it's because our, and they used to say the phrase, our conscience is bothering us. Yes. Because we know we did something wrong. There, there's just such a total absence of that. Uh, there just seems like, you know, it, we, we, we just put it aside we, or we don't consider it anymore. It, do you, I mean, when you hear about the cyber crime, I mean, aren't there some people that actually say, wait a minute, you know, I can't do that. I mean, I, it isn't right for me to hold a whole, you know, it was just in the news this past week. There were thousands of businesses and, and uh, stores that were affected because they overtook their computer systems and they, and they did have to pay huge ransoms. Right. Isn't there somebody sitting there that's saying, wait a minute, this isn't right. I can't do that to innocent people. You know, there was a survey done of teenagers and they asked them this simple question say, is it okay to do shoplifting? You'll be surprised with the answer. Majority of them, 90% of them said, yeah, they, they have so much, so much of that. So you picked up one thing, what is the big deal? So our whole understanding is guided by, we are, we are, our ego, our, see, whatever you, in a garden, in your, in your backyard, whichever part you are going to water is going to grow, right? The part which you are not going to water is not going to grow. So we have been feeding endlessly our ego. We have been feeding our greed. In MBA, they say greed is good for you. Greed is what you need to succeed. You have to have fear. Otherwise, you're not going to perform. Nobody talks about love. Nobody talks about honesty. Honesty is totally misunderstood because to practice honesty, Ray, one has to have enough courage enough wisdom, enough insight 
to be honest with themselves first. Otherwise, you cannot practice honesty anywhere else. In order to trust others, you have to have trust within you. If you cannot trust yourself, you are vulnerable to trust anybody. You are always trying to trust experts because we do not, we do not have trust within me. Absence of trust within me causes me to trust. The only reliable thing present in me is not knowledge. It's ultimate wisdom coming through the enlivening force which is giving me life, universal power. That is the only reliable source. If your brain is guided by the universal power present in you, you cannot be but truthful. You cannot be but trustworthy. But if you are guided by your human body mode, it is impossible to be trustworthy. So very simple. Well, it's very simple, but it's it's also it, it's very staggering to think that if you don't grasp that concept, which you must admit is still not at a point where everybody buys into it, and I'm not saying that they shouldn't, because I do, and I and I believe in it, so I can see the value of it most definitely, but. The great majority of people don't even understand the concept of oneness, don't even maybe haven't been introduced to it. So what you're basically saying is we are going to continue to get less and less trustworthy of, of the world and of ourselves because it's almost impossible that everybody is going to grasp the concept of oneness. I mean, that, that's, 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 a very, that's a very, uh, you know, it's Damn. obvious, Ray. Have you ever seen the two parties, our, our Democratic and Republican Party, at odd ends as they have now been? No, have you it's... ever seen people completely not trusting anybody? Even no, it's, our it's scientists the worst. It, it are. The worst. Nope. Yeah, it's the worst ever in, 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 in again, media, politics, church. Um, it's the worst ever in terms of the level of trust. Already gotten there is going to only get worse because you cannot solve a problem on the same place where you created the problem with the same thought process which has created the problem. The same thought process cannot solve that problem. You had to move away from that thought process and bring in new thinking to solve the problem. Whereas we are <clears throat> embedded in greed, fear, and ego. And we have not even, uh, in our mind, we don't even think it is anything bad. We don't until we stop with a show like this, with a conversation like this, and realize where it has gotten us, and yes. contemplate where, how bad it could get. I mean, it's, it's sad already, and it's frustrating, and it's demoralizing but boy if this really is just going to continue to get worse that's that's a staggering thought i think it's a good place to take a break and when we come back on the last break here other than oneness and i i agree that that's where we need to go but is there something else that we can do is there something else that we can do along that line that we can start today and, and we can look at differently. Or maybe it's just a matter of, of us being the beacons of light. Can we be the beacons of light that start brightening the world in a different way? Because we are right now in a very dark place. And I think, uh, sad to say, but I think the show, as we've talked through it, has really advanced how much ignorance is out there around us and maybe even within us. We will come back and uh, hopefully pick up our spirits a little bit on this edition of Stress-Free Living. Please stay with us. 
<laughs> All right, yeah. we have we have two minutes, and and Dallas, I know you you had raised your hand at one point. If you'd like to comment, you raised your hand earlier. If that was meant to say something, now is your time. We have Dr. Bhatia online. Doctor is with us too. Thank you. Hello. Good evening. Good evening Hello. from Hello. Mumbai. Welcome. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. We missed you in our last shows. I I have been uh, watching the YouTube recordings. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. We're glad you have. So Mumbai has still not opened up. There's still uh, uh, yes, a yes. partial lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you have any comments on today's show? Are we are we too harsh? Are we saying something no. is correct? But uh, but I think there is a huge shift in the value systems. And I think the very definition of right and wrong has changed. Hmm. Um, so the example that you gave about shop for lifting, you know, uh, uh, the reasons which I believe those students have given that they have enough of it, so why shouldn't we take it? Uh, and and e even if uh, if someone if someone is uh, you know uh, in need, and if he picks it up. Uh, he feels that it's justified just because he feels that if he doesn't have it and if somebody else has it, so where is, uh, he doesn't see any wrong in doing that. Yes. And I am also very, very worried about what this pandemic is going to do in the years to come uh, when uh, for no fault of theirs, when people have been jobless and uh, they are, uh, you know, out of, out of work and, uh, and 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 they 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 just want to do something so that they can you know I mean, just just to be able to afford two square meals a day. So are we going to justify crime in these times? So there's a whole uh, yes. uh, value system shift which may happen now, more so now. Thank you, thank you. We are back on Stress Free Living, and uh, during these breaks, we have the opportunity to speak with some of our wonderful Zoom listeners, and I haven't mentioned this yet today. If you would like to be a part of our Zoom conversations, visit our website, wintradio.com. It'll give you the link, and you can just join with us live every day, and we are all, have the opportunity to see your faces, and you see ours, and we also are able at that point to uh, talk with you during the breaks. Also, all of our programs are posted on our YouTube station if you just want to put in stress free living in your YouTube and we do have our own channel there that we welcome you to watch and listen to every one of our programs posted on YouTube within a couple of days of our live show. Uh, Ratanjit, before we go along the line that I would I was suggesting we do and we will go there in just a moment but one of our uh, great Zoom callers there um, brought up the point that when you mentioned shoplifting and how many people, maybe almost all of them, said it was okay to do that. Uh, our guest said, you know, it's because there's a, there's a justification going on right now. There's a feeling that if you have something and I don't, if the store has something, the store is wealthy, so to speak, and, and I'm poor. So it's perfectly right for me to shoplift, especially if it comes down to something that I need. If it comes down to food or if it comes down to something that that I think is a basic need. And today that's also shifted. I mean, today I, you know, people think a TV, a large screen TV is something they really need. Uh, you know, it isn't a luxury anymore. It's a, it's a part of my basics. So even that spectrum has changed. So if I need a new TV and, and I can't afford it, but you have them, then I'm justified to be able to get that. What, what's your thought about, about that, that, that thought process, that justification that we do as individuals, especially for basic needs like food. Well, what happens today, this, what we call civilization, is collectively human being decided we are going to sacrifice certain freedom to live together, to accommodate each other, and we are going to be fair that there are some laws made collectively so everybody, when people see those laws do not apply to rich and powerful, that takes away their commitment to follow the laws themselves. And as, as we are in a place where there is 
totally unexplained favors which is done to the rich and famous. They can get away with everything and the media is exposing them right or wrong. Uh, some, some are true stories, some are wrong stories. But ultimately, when this confusing reality is uh, broadcast all over that rich and famous don't even pay taxes, and I have to pay taxes, the rich and famous uh, they commit murder and nobody sues them and they have, they have attorneys and they have powerful people. So suddenly a normal person, his commitment or her commitment to follow those so-called values get away, they revolt. And that's what we are seeing in this environment in, in our society. And that is very bad place to be because you can fight an enemy from outside. You cannot fight an enemy from within. And the enemy lies in each of us right now, which is revolting, which is upset, which is, it doesn't matter what happens to me. We are putting all our life and this thing, the worst is already there. I can't be starved more than what I'm starved. So there's not much to lose with some of these people. We are living in a highly dangerous circumstances because guided by our human body more. You are so right. And I we just spent at the last summit talking about conscience. And I think what you just talked about, that justification that we do actually gives us a reason to ignore our conscience. Yes. Because now we can say, well, yes, I, I know it's wrong to steal something, but look at what's happening around me. Everybody else is getting away with this. And I'm a little guy and it's and and I'm not getting away with it. And so it actually allows us to ignore our conscience. And and it justifies pretty much anything at that point. Because it's, you know, we just feel so helpless and so frustrated by what we see and hear. And I, so this makes perfect sense. It's, it's, it doesn't make it right or make it better, but it does explain why we are ignoring our conscience in many cases, because we're justified to ignore the conscience. So all the more here, we, we've taken us to the point and we've got a, just a few minutes left. Ratanji, this is the point that everybody always asks me. They say, but what can we do? Okay, you guys make a lot of sense. It, it, it's so thought provoking, but what can we actually do? So let me ask you, I, I know ultimately the whole world should be in oneness. That is the, that's the only real solution. But until that happens, what can we do as individuals right now? If we acknowledge this, how can I change my life to, to put us and put myself and my family on a better path? Simplest thing is learn to make ourselves happy. Now, very simple. Ritanjit, you're talking about selfishness. This is the ultimate selfishness. If I am only concerned about my happiness, I'm not concerned about anybody else's happiness, then this world would be a much better place. Now, the problem is we don't know what makes us happy. What we think, if we satisfy the need of our five senses, giving us short-term pleasure, good food, good movie, good thing, good car, short-term short -term pleasures, that's what we call happiness that only lasts very short time. The true happiness is the happiness of the soul, not the human body. And that happiness only comes from us when we make a difference, when we help somebody, when we add value to our society, our environment unconditionally. So all the tools, all the education, we 
suddenly can utilize to add the highest value and the society automatically improves in the process because we are part of the society we improve and fairness automatically comes in because our race is not to get more but our race is to give more it kind of sounds crazy but when we add the highest value we experience what you call as joy inner joy and that once you get hooked to that joy and that is why you have seen people who sacrifice everything they have to help somebody to help society they are still there those are the pillars of our society on which the society still uh, is stable but we have to before a student gets a degree in kindergarten in earlier stages we should tell them what is the purpose of life what will make them truly happy and then later on we can give them all the tools whereas we are never told we are told oh no no you be a good guy you be a nice person you be nice this thing but we never tell them that what is good for you what is good for you what is best for you is the inner happiness and that only comes from making a difference and have them experience that how many times can have we taken our children to have them experience making a difference to others unconditionally we don't focus on that so the mission of earlier schooling should be embed that mindset in our humanity and your entire race will change ray it's not about uh, even oneness or anything this is oneness gives you that understanding more clearly but let's first take care of ourselves how do we become the happiest person we can be i just love what you just said we only have about a minute left ratanji so i just want to reiterate that point because i what i think i heard and i want to make sure the people understand this and hear this the 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 oneness concept is is fabulous and it's the ultimate utopia that that we may someday somehow get to but if we just take it and simplify it to simply say what really makes us happy is to make a difference for the lives of others and we've all experienced that or most of us have experienced that once or multiple times and we know what you're talking about that joy that you feel that you did something unconditionally is just just resonates within you and lasts for a long long time because you know that you did the right thing and you know that you made a difference in people's lives if we just start doing that and expose our young people to that and instead of just buying our kids things and giving them things help them to experience that true joy then we are perhaps changing a whole generation of people to start realizing that it's not about the greed and the ego and and the things but it's about that true joy within us and also ray this thought process people are say but how does it work in business how does it work in job if you are also part in adding the highest value to your fellow human workers fellow human beings your environment and your customers and your society you are automatically going to succeed because ultimately you are making adding the highest value through your services and products whereas we are focused on highest profit automatically highest profit will be a by product of this thought process 
Rataji, thank you. It is time that we have to go. We want to thank you as always for your wonderful insight and wisdom. And we also want to thank our Zoom guests that are with us here today and all of our listeners. We appreciate very much you are with us here again today. Remember, folks, we're all playing the same game. Have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you again real soon.